Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today is So Long Sunday. Um, we just finished our Monty Sew Along last week so we have a tutorial this week and then we're going to be doing a little, something a little bit different um, for the next few weeks and I'll talk about that in just a second. Alright, for today's tutorial I've had some requests for a sway back adjustment um, how I do that on patterns. I think I made the lyric, I, it was one of my Sew the Looks, um, my white linen lyric, and I had mentioned that I did a um, uh, sway back adjustment for that pattern and then had a whole bunch of requests on how for me to show how I do that um, adjustment. So I thought that I would go ahead and do that today. But um, before we go over to the cutting table where I'm gonna show you um, the actual how I do it on a pattern. I want to talk a little bit about how to decide if you need a sway back adjustment. Um, I had a couple questions on this as well. All right, so a sway back adjustment is if in the back, if you find that you have a lot of pooling right above in that curve of your back. So, you know, when you're standing and you know you've got your curve that goes into the top of your rear end. If you have pooling of fabric right there at the base of your back, that usually means you need a sway back adjustment. Not always, but that can be an indicator of a sway back adjustment. Usually what causes this is that your back is shorter than what the pattern is drafted for. So fabric is gonna go to the smallest point. Um, things will ride up and, and look for the smallest point if things are too tight. Now, just because you have need a sway back adjustment doesn't necessarily mean the pattern's too tight. What it means is, is that the pattern is too long, so it's not getting wide. You know, for instance, if you're making a sheath dress um, where it's just a one piece back, um, you know, with a zipper down the center back, for instance. What it means, and the reason you're getting that pooling, is that it, um, it's halting. So the fabric is riding up so that the hips fill out where the hips are supposed to fill out in the dress and there's not enough length than what's drafted in the pattern. So you have a little bit of excess in the back. My eyeball just dried out. Very sorry. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so that's that's kind of what causes a sway back adjustment. Um, you know, a lot of times you can, you look at someone and if they've got like a shelf butt, for instance, you know, if they stand I, I stand this way with my shoulders back, my chest sticking out, and my butt basically balancing out my top half. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people think that, that that's what caused, I mean, that is a sway back, <laughs> but that doesn't necessarily mean just because if you stand that way, do you necessarily meet, need a sway back adjustment? Really has more to do with the length. So that is kind of what, um, so if you have a short torso, for instance, like I do, um, you know, a lot of times you may have to reduce length all the way around. So if you've got, you know, a fitted dress where it fits in at the waist and you have a lot of excess fabric all the way around, then you just need to shorten your bodice on the front and the back. But if you're only finding it in the back, and a lot of times that does happen to me because my bust is large, it eats up that extra length because I do have a very short upper body, um, but that eats up length for things going over my bust. Even after I've done a full bust adjustment, I usually don't need to shorten a bodice sometimes, but not usually. A lot of times if I do have to shorten it, it's up here in this vicinity above my bust line. But <laughs> that's a whole nother discussion for another day. But I do a lot of times need that um, excess fabric pulled up so that things, you know, the hips are, where the hips have been drafted on the pattern are hitting on where my hips are. Where the fullest part of my rear end should hit is hitting where the pattern is. So that's usually when I just need to take a little bit up um, there in that, that center back. Now, Another thing that can kind of cause a similar issue, and this doesn't have to just necessarily be on the bodice, you can need a sway back adjustment as well, um, like with just a skirt, for instance. Um, although sometimes this can uh, be an indicator that you might need a full butt adjustment. <laughs> so if you have a little bit um, protruding rear end, a little bit you know, wider rear end, um, a nice full rear end, you may need a full butt adjustment, which we're not gonna get into that today, but um, it is very similar to a full bust adjustment. You just need a little extra room back there for that curve that you have going on in, in the back. But that withstanding, sometimes um, it will cause pooling, because again, fabric is trying to go where, you know, to the smallest point and to fit. Um, where you know the parts have been drafted and that could cause a sway back adjustment. So the way you can determine if you need a full butt adjustment or a sway back adjustment a lot of times has to do with drag lines. If you're finding on the back of your skirt from the side seams that you've got um, drag lines going up 
pointing right towards the center of your rear end, that is a good indicator you need a full butt adjustment. Now, if you've got just, you know, if you're not having that, if you've got enough room in your hips and all of that, you know, things aren't too tight, um, but you're still getting a little pooling, and this does happen to me as well sometimes, in between the waistband, um, I'll get just a little pucker of fabric, like on a pencil skirt, for instance, that could mean you just need a little bit of a sway back adjustment as well, because again, I'm short. <laughs> so um, from where my waist is to where my butt starts uh, it some, is a little bit shorter than um, more of a petite thing than other people. Usually I'm fine in the front, the way my body is. So that's when, you know, I wouldn't need to take anything out of a lengthen and shorten line necessarily. I would just need to take it out um, right there at the waistband. And usually at that point you can just kind of shave off a little bit at the top of the waist. So we'll go over to the cutting um, table, but that's kind of the difference in how you kind of know you need um, a sway back adjustment. It really has more to do with length and less to do with curve for the most part. A lot of times with curve, um, not always, but a lot of times, you know, if you've got the drag lines and stuff, that means you just need a little bit of extra room just in the back. Just like I need a little extra room just in the front for my bust you may need just a little extra room just for your butt, um, you know, for that. And actually, as I'm sitting here thinking, I'm very narrow-hipped. Most of my hip measurement has to do with the fact that my butt grows out, not wide. When I put on weight, just the way I'm built and shaped. So a lot of times what might look like I need a sway back adjustment in some cases might be that I do need a full butt adjustment, just depending on my weight at the time and <laughs> and uh, the type of garment. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over to the um, cutting table now and I'm gonna show you how to do a sway back adjustment in a couple of different um, pattern types. So I will meet you over there. Um, but before I go, don't forget, I'm, I do have, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, I do have a coffee account. I really just appreciate, it's like a virtual tip jar. I really appreciate that. Um, for those that are able and willing to do, to drop a, you know, a couple bucks into the coffee account, it really helps me, um, especially with these type of videos, the instructional type of videos. Um, all that money goes right back into the channel for supplies, equipment, all that kind of stuff, because um, they're just a little more labor and time intensive. Um, so yes, I just wanted to um, put a little plug in on that. Also, for starting next week, instead of going into another sew along like I normally would do, I'm gonna be going into my zipper tutorials. So I'm, I have no idea how many weeks I'm gonna go out on this one. <laughs> Each week's gonna be a different zipper insertion tutorial. So I'll start with the basics. I'll start with, you know, your invisible zipper, your um, slot zipper, um, um, lapped zipper, exposed zipper. Um, you know, I'll start kind of with the basics and then we will move, you know, I've had some requests on how to move a zipper from like center back to side seam or vice versa. Um, which is a very easy thing to do that I can definitely show you. Um, exposed zippers, especially the real, you know, there's two different ways you can do an exposed zipper, but the ones specifically that have the decorative tape uh, on how I would finish those off. Um, what else? Um, like a welt pocket, like a zippered welt pocket where you're putting in a zipper. Um, also requests for like a quarter zip where you don't have a yoke where you can easily, you know, kill the zipper into the yoke of the quarter zip, but where it's just like a placket. Um, you know, how to do one of those. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of requests for a whole bunch of different ones. So um, anyway, we're just going to start and we're going to see how far this takes us. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of film one each week and then we'll pop them up and uh, go from there. So yeah, that's what we have instead of a sew along for the next few weeks. Just going to get some of these zipper tutorials out there for you guys. Um, and then we'll dive into another uh, sew along when those are all finished. So that's kind of the plan going forward. Okay, we're going to go to the cutting table now. I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you all again on Tuesday. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to show you, um, I basically have a dress here <laughs> with a, um, this is the back, and I've just cut it in two so that I can show you guys what to do with just a bodice, and I can also show you guys what to do with the skirt. Obviously, all this would be the same if you had, um, if you were working with the dress. Actually, if we were working with the dress, as you can see when I overlap this, it creates a dress. Um, you may want to do all of your adjustments kind of above and below the waist. So usually there's a waist seam in most patterns, so that's an option if you're doing a full back. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so this is a back. Um, this would be the case with fitted. Usually you need the sway back adjustment the most in fitted things. 
um, because that's when, um, you know, that where the tightness wants to go in a fitted something, it's not because the length is too long in the back or whatever. That's when you can normally see it. Usually when things are looser fitting, you have a lot more wearing ease. It'll just, it won't be as noticeable because it'll just glide over that area, over your butt and all those curves and you're usually good to go. So um, usually it's a fitted garment. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do, um, make sure I've got all my bits and pieces. So if you're working on, let's say, a fit and flare dress or any kind of a, a dress um, that has a fitted or a waist seam, this will work for that. This includes tops, jackets, whatever. Um, you can use this for, um, use this method for the sway back adjustment. Now, um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I just lost my train of thought. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this is for the bodice. Now, oh, I know I was going to say. It, in a sheath dress situation, so if these were two were connected and I was making myself a sheath dress, I could actually get away if it had a, a seam, a waist seam, just doing the sway back adjustment in the bodice. And Because usually when I've got something, if it's sitting correctly at my waist, the bottom half, which typically for me, I don't usually get the pooling below the waist. My pooling usually happens above the waist. I mean, if there's no waist seam, sometimes that can kind of pull down below where the actual waist is. But for the most part, my pooling happens above the waist because I have a very short upper back. So um, it just kind of depends on you. But even if I was doing a sheath dress with a waist seam, I would just do this to the top of the bodice. So usually there is a lengthen and shorten line on the bodice and usually one on the bottom, on the, the bottom half. If not, you can just easily draw yourself one and it's fine if it goes through the dart. And I'm going to show you why here in just a second. Okay, so the first thing is obviously determining how much of a sway back adjustment you do you need. So if you make a muslin, you can obviously pinch it out of center back, how much you need, and that can kind of tell you. But I'm just gonna tell you, overfitting this area is really easy and usually less is more. And it's amazing how much a little pinch can do, like how even just a half of an inch can make a big difference. I would typically not do more than an inch. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty, um, that's, that's kind of, that's a lot. But again, everybody's different. So, you know, just remember, just go little by little. If you need more than that, your body needs more than that. But maybe just go in increments and just do a lot of muslins. Okay, this is center back. This is where I need my length taken out of this side. Um, we're going to pretend there's seam allowances on this and that I have a center back seam for this one. So a zipper, let's say, goes into this center back seam. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to mark over here on my side seam my um, seam allowance, and let's just say it's half of an inch, or five-eighths. We'll say it's five-eighths. Five-eighths of an inch. And I'm going to take out um, half of an inch. You can, you can take the wedge above the line or below the line. It doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is start at nothing here at my seam allowance and go to a half of an inch roughly i'm going to go above a half of an inch here um at center back because i want it a definitely a half of an inch at the sewing line so you can mark in your seam allowance just to make sure you hit that i just kind of eyeball it because i don't know i can just kind of determine where that is and then you're going to draw a wedge okay so now you can do this one or two ways you can cut either line it really doesn't matter I'm gonna cut two, but not through that side seam. And then from the side, I'm gonna do cut two, but not through that side seam. And now, okay, so I've cut this top line. So now I'm moving this top down, right along that line. Now you're gonna notice some things are skewing. That's okay, don't panic. I had some questions, oh my gosh, I need new pens. Look at that, I am just totally, <laughs> These are the juiciest pins. I get a lot of um, questions on, you know, like, well, how do you know what your, you know, your grain line's now skewed? How do you know what to go off of? Go off the piece you did not move. So we moved the top down. So I'm going to go off the grain line that's here at the bottom. I'll use a different color of juicy pin so you can see the difference here. 
So my grain line is going to go off from the bottom because that's the piece I didn't move. Now, had I moved the bottom up, cut the bottom line and moved it up, I would go with this grain line. Okay, so there's my new grain line. All right, and now you'll notice that our dart has shifted. So this is a one inch dart. So I am just going, it really didn't move much, but I'm just going right up through the center. Now you're gonna wanna stay parallel to your grain line. Luckily, my um, bottom seam here is um, per perpendicular to my grain line, which helps, but you know, a lot of times that's not the case on a waist seam, so. So there's my dart point, it moved just a little bit. So now I'm just gonna redraw my dart. Just straighten it out. Okay, and then here, you know, just kind of true this a little bit. You're gonna have a little bit of a, a curve there. But then again, this is cut on um, a double because this is a seam allowance here. Now, let's pretend that in fact your center back gets cut on the fold. If this is a knit dress or something, you have two options. You can add seam allowance and sew that curve in, because a lot of times it means your body needs that little bit of curve. You can get a really beautiful fit if you put a center back seam even in the back of a knit something, because you can you can sew where you need, where your waist nips in. But if you wanna keep things on the fold, it's very simple. You go from known point, which is up here, to known point, which is down here, and just redraw your straight line. Yes, that adds a little bit of width here, but that's that's fine. That will give you your straight line um, that will allow you to cut it out on the fold. And this is same goes for um, a sheath dress if it goes all the way down, if you don't have a waist seam and that sort of thing, um, you'll need to do that all the way down. Now, I know I'm gonna get the question, okay, so I've removed half of an inch here at a center back, how is that going to affect the hem? In theory, and this is the way it works with me most of the time, I need that length removed from that part of my body so it does not affect my hem at all because my waist seam still sits at my waist so the hem is not affected. I'm just removing the excess fabric. But if you do notice, you know, if you're doing a whole sheath dress that doesn't have a waist seam all the way down, if you do make the muslin and notice the back is short, you can add this amount to the bottom of the dress there at the hem um, to give yourself an even hem. So that kind of is a, you know, kind of depends. Obviously, the more, the bigger the wedge you take out here, the more distorted this gets here. And the more, you know, if you're cutting it out in the fold, the more width you're adding here. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want that width added here, don't cut it out on the fold. Just add seam allowance and sew a center back seam. That can make for a really beautiful fit in the back of a dress. So that is um, the top, okay? Now, if you are short from your waist to where your butt starts and you notice that you get the bunching, like if you're making a pencil skirt, for instance, and you get the bunching, move that all the way out of the way, um, up here at the top of your waist. First, make sure that it's not an, an issue that, you know, you need to do a full butt adjustment. We're not covering that today. Um, you know, again, that will be drag lines going from the side seam pointing up to the fullest point of the butt, um, just like with the full bust adjustment. So that, you know, will give you, um, am I saying that right? Or are they drag lines going down? Hold on, let me think this through. I'm sorry, I'm not saying, if things are too loose, they'll be going up. Um, tight, they're going down. So if you've got drag lines going down, is that correct? No, nope, I was saying that right. It's up. <laughs> if it's a little too tight in the butt and things are coming up this way, but it matches your hip measurement, like it should be fine, that just means you need a little bit of extra room in the hip or in the butt. Um, that sometimes can give you the extra pooling here. And once you've released that, everything goes to where it's supposed to be, you won't get that issue. But if you're just short in this area and you need to do that issue, it's the same thing. Now you may be tempted and it's a great thing if you've already made the skirt and you don't wanna mess with it, you can just adjust your waistline. You know, like if you need to take off a half of an inch, just take it off from the top and curve it. So you would take it off from center back here and then just grab do a nice gentle curve to nothing and you could definitely I mean that's a good I mean that's what your body needs so that you know you could do that however keep in mind that this dart where you've taken an inch out here you're now taking in less 
and it's, so it's made the waist a little bit bigger. So do keep that in mind. You may need to adjust your um, dart out to where you're taking in the same amount and then redraw your dart, um, you know, with a straight edge through there. So do keep that in mind that that may adjust your waist a little bit. Maybe not enough, you know, you can maybe ease stuff in. It may not be enough, but that could possibly happen. But the other option is just to do the same thing um, that I did with the bus or the top is you're gonna mark in your seam allowance. Let's say half of an inch again. And this all depends, you know, let's say this bottom half is cut on the fold. You know, it's a pencil skirt with a side seam. It's just gonna be the same thing. So we're gonna cut our line. Again, you could cut either line. We're gonna cut to that point, but not through it. And then we're gonna come at the side, cut to the seam allowance, but not through it. And then we're going to lower it. So since we are adjusting the top and not the bottom, so to move that down, I'm making such a mess with these pens. Hey. We will be making, redrawing our um, grain line with the bottom because that was the piece that didn't move. I hope that makes sense on why I do it that way. And then you can either, again, known point, known point, redraw, center back so you could cut it on the fold and you'll have a little bit of excess here or you just sew it with that um you know add your seam allowances sew your center back seam and do that little bit of take in there okay oh you also need to redo your dart again which is just a matter of finding the center point of the dart now this is a good one because this is not um if you draw all about lines here so then you want to be perpendicular there so half of an inch so that will be the center of the dart so there's your new dart point there and you just redraw your dart like so and that will keep everything um, in line and where you need it to be so that's how it's not hard it's just, it literally is just, where do I need to reduce fabric? Take that little wedge out. You want to go to nothing at the hip because if you're just needing a sway back adjustment, that means the front's fine. So you just need to pull out a little bit there at center back. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know if you have questions in the comments below and I will try to answer those as soon as possible. Thanks guys, see you on Tuesday.